Hello everyone. In this lesson, I will cover the basic data types in R. By the end of this lesson, you will learn the various data types in R and understand their characteristics. So the data types in R include numeric data type. This can be any number that you can think of. We have integer data type, which can be positive or negative whole numbers written in a special way in R, which we are going to discover very soon. Strictly whole numbers. Character data types, which are mainly text, strings, words. So if you want to write sentences, if you want to write words, you have to write it in the form of a character data type. Logical data type, which are simply the logical constants that we learned earlier, and that includes true or false. Complex data type, which happens to be any expression of the form A plus BI. Now, complex data types have two parts. We have the real part, which is the A, and the imaginary part, which is the B that comes with the I. And this A and B are actually real numbers. The only thing is this form is expressed as a complex data type. There is one more data type which will not be covered in this lesson, but much later in another lesson, which is the factor data type. We use that data type to handle categorical variables. Additionally, with time, you will get to hear of other data types like double, float. They represent decimal numbers and booleans, which also express logic. But the choice of data types often depends on the programming language that is being used. However, in R, double and float types are mainly treated as numeric and booleans are recognized as logical data types. So let's go into R and demonstrate these data types. Now, in R Studio, let's start with the numeric data type. So this can be any number that you can think of, whole numbers or decimal point numbers. So for example, if I write 78 and I execute, we end up getting the 78 retained in the console. We can also write something like 78 point any other decimal places and executing this, we also get the same result. However, if you want to check whether this actually belongs to the numeric data type, we can use the class function. So let's write a comment here. Use class function to check the data type. So this is very simple. All you have to do is just write the class function and then pass the number into the parenthesis as an argument for this particular function. We will learn more about how to use function, but this is the basic way of using it. So I will just go ahead and place this number 78 into the class function. Executing it, we get the answer to be numeric. So this tells you that the 78 is a numeric data type. So if I put the decimal point numbers also into the class function and execute, we end up getting the result as numeric. So this is how you can basically write numeric data types. As for integers, they are strictly positive or negative whole numbers. So in which case, if you want to write an integer, you have to add the letter L as a suffix to the number which you are writing. For example, if you write 78, we already know that the 78 is numeric data type from up here. But if I suffix the L letter to this number, executing it retains the 78, which seems not to be so much different from the numeric. However, if we check the data type, so let's pass this 78L into the class function and execute, and it is an integer. So if you want to express a number as specifically an integer, you just have to suffix this letter L to that particular number. Now, because this integer happens to be specifically whole numbers, if you attempt to write something like 78.987 and you suffix the L character, you will end up getting a warning message. It will display it as a numeric data type, but you get a warning message which says that the 78.987L contains decimals. So it is using the numeric value of this decimal point number which you have written. So the L is only used with whole numbers, whether positive or negative. So I can even go ahead and write the class function and pass into it negative 67 by just suffixing the L character, we end up getting the result to be an integer. So they should strictly be whole numbers, positive or negative. Whereas any number that doesn't have the suffix L will be treated as 
a numeric data type, positive or negative values. As for the character data type, they are simply text. If I write something like R programming, I highlight this line of code and I execute, I end up getting an error because R doesn't understand the syntax. However, if you want to write a character data type or a text, as is seen here, you have to wrap this in double or single quotes. So here you can wrap text in double or single quotes. So for example, I can just go ahead and put this R programming into the double quotes. And if I execute this line of code, it is no longer an error, but the text is actually printed to the console. So if you want to write any text as a character data type, you simply have to write it in double quotes or you can write it in single quotes. So I can write programmer and also execute and you see that the output is also returned to the console. And so all you have to do is now to pass these texts into the class function in order to check what data type that they belong. So if I execute this code, you see that the result is a character. So that is a character data type. If I also go ahead and pass programmer to the class function and execute, you also end up getting character. The reason for using double quotes and single quotes in writing text is because sometimes you would want to personalize some of the text. Like for example, my name is Elijah. So I would go ahead and write something like Elijah's book. So when that happens, we have an apostrophe, in which case, if you go ahead and execute this, you see that is rendered correctly in the console when the output is returned. However, if I go to the stream ends of the text and use the single quote, while I use the apostrophe right here, R sees Elijah itself as the string, where this quote is the beginning of the string and this one is the end of the string. Now, anything that follows afterwards, R doesn't really recognize that syntax. So if you go ahead and execute this code, you end up getting an error. And so that is why we, we can use the double quotes and that of the single quote. However, there is still an alternative if you still insist on using the single code for writing the character data type. What you need to do is that this apostrophe here, you wish to inform R not to see it as the end of the string, Elijah, but rather you would want to escape this particular character. You want R to overlook this character and see the rest of the text as part of the string, still using the single code. So in order to do that, you just have to come before this particular character and then pass the backslash before it and R escapes this particular character. And so if you go ahead and execute this code, it doesn't throw an error anymore and you can see that is also rendered correctly. So whenever you are writing a text and you have a particular character which is causing some sort of conflict, you just have to use the backslash to escape that particular character and that will be rendered correctly. So I can go ahead and pass this into the class function execute and we end up getting the character data type. Now the logical data types are mainly true and false. So for example, we have seen the logical constants true and then we have also seen the logical constant false. So executing them would result in true and false being printed to the console. Remember we said that these logical constants are reserved keywords in R. And so executing them will not return an error. Let's clear the console. But if I write anything like true, where the first letter is in uppercase and the rest of the letters are in lowercase, when I execute, I end up getting an error because this is not a reserved keyword in R. If I also write it all in lowercase letters and execute, you still end up getting an error. So unless of course you really want to inform R that this is a character, then you would simply need to place this in double quote or single quote and tell R that is a character data type. Otherwise, you simply get an error for that. So now, if we pass this true and false into the class function and execute, we would see what particular data type they belong. So if I execute this code, we see that that is a logical data type. And if I also execute class or false, we also get the logical data type. There is one more logical data type that I want to mention here, and that happens to be NA. You can see that this NA is highlighted as a blue color. If I execute, it doesn't return an error, but it returns the NA. So this NA is also a reserved keyword in R. This is simply short for not available. 
and this is what is used in R to represent missing values in data frames. So if you want to write missing values in R, it is just simply NA. And if you go ahead and pass the class function to this particular NA reserve keyword and execute, you see that that is also a logical data type. Now, on the issue of complex data type, it has both the real part and imaginary part as we saw in the slides. So we have the real and imaginary part, and that is of the form A plus BI. So for example, if I go ahead and write five, and then just simply suffix the letter I to this number, let's clear the console first, execute this line of code, and we get zero plus five I. So if you have this five I, this five is seen as the imaginary part of the complex data type. And so when executed, we get zero plus five I. So the zero here is simply the real part of the complex data type. So I can now be very clear and write something like 67 plus 100 I. If I execute this, we get 67 plus 100 I. So if we pass these complex data types into the class function, and execute, we see that that also belongs to the complex data type. If I also go ahead and execute this code, that also belongs to the complex data type. So these are the basic data types that we have in R.